All right, we're here at the Cowboy Way in Gene Autry, Oklahoma, with a legend, Mr. James Drury, and it's an honor to be sitting here with you, Mr. Drury. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Okay, I got one question for you that I want to throw at you. Well, I'm not really a question. I just want to tell you. I want to tell you about the first time I knew who James Drury was. Okay. You were one of the Reno brothers. That's right. Elvis Presley's first picture. Love me tender. And we had a wonderful time with that show. And he was this young man. We didn't know who, had no idea who Elvis was. None of us knew. He, he had been on the Ed Sullivan show, you know, and all that. But we weren't really aware of that. So we said, who, who is Elvis? Well, we found out who Elvis was, you know. Uh, over the next 40, 50 years, we got a pretty good idea of who Elvis was. But yeah, was he great. came on there, and he was such an eager uh, earnest young man. He wanted to be very, very good in whatever he did. He was seeking perfection. He tried, wanted to know everything we knew about uh, freedom in front of the camera and how to, how to relate uh, to motion picture acting. And we told him everything we possibly could. And he wanted to know how you learn your lines. And I told him, don't learn your lines, learn your script. Right, learn the right. script from beginning to end. And he, told other people that that's how he did it. So I was the first one that told him that because when I work, I read the play and learn the whole play, everybody's lines, every situation, even in scenes I'm not in. Right. Otherwise, how are you gonna know what the story is? Yeah. So that's what I, what, I, what he left, uh, got for me. Yeah. And I that was- That picture had some great actors in it, Richard Egan, oh, and Deborah yeah. Padgett, boy, that, that it was a wonderful, wonderful cast. And oh, let me say, uh, William Campbell. Yeah, he was great. <laughs> and I think, uh, I think it was one of the best pictures Elvis ever made. I made a lot of pictures, but most of them were very sketchy on the script, you know, yeah. and they did, spent a few dollars on the script and the rest of the cast and gave Elvis his million dollar salary or whatever he was getting at that time, uh -huh. which was at least a million. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, he went on with it, but they weren't, this was a planned motion picture with a well-written script and a well-developed story, and he did well with it. Did, did you see Elvis any time after that? Oh, did many times. Many times? Many times. I would go to a town where he was appearing, uh -huh. I'd go to the show, buy a ticket, and within five minutes, <laughs> he'd know I was in the show, and, or in the audience, and he'd send one of his guys out to come get me, and I'd go backstage, but then we'd, we'd hang out all night, you know. Mm -hmm. So I, I saw him many, in many different venues, many around the country. Well, the one thing that I liked about that movie, personally, was the family unit that oh, was yeah. there between you, all of y'all. Well, it, it, it rang true. It, it had the ring of truth to it. And, uh, and, it, and all the, the tragedy of the, the ending of it was almost foreordained, foreordained you know. We, you could kind of see it coming, uh, but no one knew when we got back to the Civil War that all this romance had started between Elvis and, the, and Deborah Padgett. So that became as a big shock to Richard Egan and to all the rest of us. So <laughs> that was the way it worked out. But we sure enjoyed it. I of. really enjoyed the uh, the the part where. Y'all were all on the porch, and everybody was singing. He was singing, and y'all were clapping along with him. Yeah, well, I was probably clapping wrong. <laughs> uh, I can't sing, I can't carry a tune in a wheelbarrow. Well, don't feel bad, neither can I. And, uh, <laughs> uh, I was talking to one of the guys from the Sons of the Pioneers in the early days of the Virginian. I had the chance to do a big, uh, big show in uh, Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, and one in St. Louis. They were circuses, police circuses. They benefited the police force or the police retirement fund or whatever. And uh, we always had the Sons of the Pioneers as a musical act that I took in there. And they would always look at me and say, please don't sing, Jim. <laughs> whatever you do, don't sing. Just don't sing. Mouth the words if you want to, but don't sing. So we were in Harrisburg, and I'd, I'd been instructed not to sing. But the, our closing number that I did with two other musicians was this land is your land, this land is my land. I thought, well, hell, I can clap. So I clapped and 12,000 people are clapping. The Virginian can do no wrong. 
So I'm clapping like this. And they're this. clapping with you. And they're clapping with me, and they're wrong. <laughs> they're all to be. So I went over to my dad had come out from, my dad was a professor at New York University, and he'd taken the train out there to see the show. And I went by his table at the party afterwards, and I said, well, Dad, how'd you like the show? He said it was wonderful, Jimmy. It was just wonderful. But somebody ought to teach you something about music. I said, well, Dad, you know I can't sing. I've never been able to sing. He said, yeah, but my God, you can't even clap. <laughs> <laughs> the, I, the one thing, uh, the one thing I, I think a lot of people would like to know, the, the ones who haven't heard you on an interview might want to know how you wound it up getting the part that you have become so well known for. Well, I had to, I had to do a screen test for it. And their only comment was, you're too fat, go lose some weight. So I went and worked out for about two weeks and went back and did another screen test. They said, you're too fat, go lose some weight. So I went back for another couple of weeks, and in 30 days, I lost 30 pounds. Mm. And I did a third screen test, and they didn't say anything except a week later, well, you're going to play the role. Now, we got the, got the word on the Friday night before the Monday morning we started to shoot. And then nine years later, we were done. So, yeah. yeah. But that was a great run, though. That was a great run. A great, well, you were in a great company time. with uh, Gary Cooper played, I think, the first Virginia, and then Joel McCray. That's and right. I guess you were next, and then there have been so many after you. Well, they had, Bill Pullman did one, which I had a bit part in, and uh, I think uh, Tra Trace Adkins did one. I had never, never found out what happened to that. I haven't seen it or know if it's ever been released or not, but I don't know. they but, made one with uh, Ron Perlman. To me, you are the Virginian. Well, uh, Dustin Farnham and William S. Hart both made silent versions okay. of it, and they both played it on the stage. It was uh -huh. a big hit on Broadway. In 1903, they came out with the Virginian as a stage play, and it was a big success. And then they toured the country with it, and so it's it's been... Very, novel. very instrumental and important to a lot of actors oh, yeah. that have played the role. The novel by Owen Wister, which I've never read, and that's, that's kind of sad because I read most everything. Well, I had read that in high school and uh, had loved the story, but of course we, we just kept the characters' right. names. We changed their personalities a lot because we had to have three leading men. So we changed Steve from a cattle rustler to a leading man, and we changed Travis from a gunslinger to a leading man. Mm -hmm. Because we had to have that continuity, so. Well, I know you've got to get back to your fans, and they're, they're yes, waiting sir. for you out there. Yes, but it's sir. been a real pleasure My and pleasure. an honor. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you for having uh, me. I, I'm honored. Oh, I'm honored, honored to be I'm here. Honored. I'm always honored All to talk right. to you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, the Virginian. <laughs>